Hi guys, and welcome to another Rixton Education video. I'm Rob, and today I'll be looking at the cache scope that was introduced back in Mule 3.3. The idea behind the cache scope is to speed up your flow by caching data that is frequently reused by your Mule instance, instead of loading the data again from external resources or going through a list of message processes that produce the same data when given the same input. Here you can see the simple example flow that has been set up to demonstrate the cache scope. In the XML you can see the cached message processes declared inside the cache tag which is found under the EE namespace. When Mule does not find cached data it goes through the message processes defined in the cache scope and populates the cache with the final result. If data already resides within the cache, then it is immediately returned without going through the nested message processes. In this cache scope, we have three message processes. The first one is a logger, which informs us when Mule encounters a cache miss and consequently goes through the processor chain. On the other hand, when Mule encounters a cache hit, no logging occurs. The second message processor is a JDBC outbound endpoint that queries the database given the payload as input. Here we can see the definition of the database connector, together with the SQL select statement used in the example. The last message processor is an expression transformer. From the JDBC result, we are extracting the value column of the first returned row. Each item in the cache is a key value pair, where the key represents the payload at the cache scope entry point. The value is the result at the end of the cache scope. In our case, the cached entry value would be the result of the expression transformer. By default, Mule creates the cache key by performing an SHA-256 operation on the payload. For the cache entry value, Mule will cache not just the payload at the end of the cache scope, but the whole Mule event. The idea behind this is that apart from the payload, you might also need other information such as, such as message properties. The default key store, sorry, the default store Mule uses as a cache is an in-memory object store. All items will be stored in memory with configurable time to live and other basic options. More advanced options are available by configuring a custom object store and a caching strategy. So let's confirm this caching behavior by running the flow in AnyPoint Studio. You'll notice that we have the H2 database driver and Spring JDBC framework added to the build path for this project. Okay, so let's start the application, which will then wait for requests via the HTTP endpoint. I'll now make a request using Postman. And first off, I'll make a request using URL cache 3. When the HTTP request is received on the inbound endpoint, the data following the last forward slash is extracted from the URL. In this example, the payload after the expression transformer is 3. Using this payload, Mule goes through the cache scope and will either invoke the message processor chain if no entry key is found in the cache for that payload or will retrieve it directly from the cache. Okay, so let's check the console output. As you can see, the database was queried to get the item for key 3. Now I'll clear the console. 
This time I will run a collection of requests comprised of the odd key numbers between 1 and 11. That's six requests. Okay, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. According to the console, the database was queried for 1, 5, 7, 9, 11, which means the item for key 3 was returned from the cache. I'll clear the console again and this time request all URLs from 1 to 12. And this time we have only items with even keys being requested as all the odd numbered results have already been cached. Oh, one important thing to note about meal caching is that to be able to use the cache scope, the payload must be cacheable. Payloads which are read once, in other words consumables, such as streams, are non-cacheable. Well, I hope that this has been useful. Be sure to check out the original blog post for more information. If you have any questions, feel free to comment here or on the blog. Stay updated with what's going on with Rixton and in the integration world. Follow us on Twitter or give us a like on Facebook. Thanks for watching and until next time.